streaming? I think we're streaming this. I think this is streaming now. How are we doing? Okay. So, hey out there everybody. My name's Matt Mirage. Uh, today's my birthday and yeah, we're doing a little bit of uh, streaming here from the darkroom space. I think we've got the setup uh, pretty fine-tuned at this point. I've got a primary camera right here that I'm talking to you guys from, and I also have a secondary camera so you can watch some of this uh, this coding process. I'm going to switch to that camera now, and right now it's not showing much, uh, but we've got this little camera right down here, and that can show like all of my hand coding and yeah stuff that's going on uh, like that. If you see me peer over this way or folks on that f uh, that device that see me peering over this way it's because I'm streaming to two services at once. I'm trying a little TikTok live so I got some vertical video action going on over there and I have the main YouTube stream going on here. Who else, uh, who else hang out in the chat? I do have a chat app that I want to try out so uh, hey out there folks. Who do we have here? Oh my goodness we have a lot of people hanging out in the chat right now. Let's see what we got. Uh, happy birthday from Steve Martin. Thank you, Steve. Mark Full. Hey, Mark. How's it going, man? Thank you, sir. Jeff. Amanda. Terry. Hey, my mom is in the stream. Hey, mom. Hey. Uh, oh, my goodness. Hey, uh, Maddie O'Neill on TikTok. Hey, what's going on? All right. Whoa, we have 36 people already. This is insane. Who else do we have? Uh, we have Roger Harrison. Dave Palermo. Hey, what's going on, Dave? All right. We have Pepe. We got JP in the chat, uh, CM, thank you, sir, coming from Sweden, oh my goodness. Um, all right, I got Jay, camera, g <laughs> all right, Ciro, Simon, Dennis, Thomas, hey, Sam Fami, how you doing, Sam? All right, we got Max, photo online, oh my goodness, we have folks, folks coming from all over the world right now. Uh, this is so cool to see. We have somebody from Scotland watching the TikTok stream. This is pretty cool. I'm going to do my best to juggle all of this stuff. Uh, but first I want to explain why I'm here live. A lot of you are probably seeing it in the chat. Um, yeah, it, today's my birthday. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You get to a certain age, you're like, wow, I never thought, what do I do now? Like, I made it this far. So uh, that's how I feel at 36 right now. So I thought, what would a better way to uh, celebrate than do what I was going to do anyway, but I'm just going to live stream it. And that's uh, hang out here in the dark room and make some Kalotype prints. Uh, but if, uh, if you're interested in the type of prints that you're seeing me make here today, I also have a print sale thing that I'm trying to do. And uh, this is kind of a wild thing. You can head over to mirage.com slash prints and pr every print on my website right now is for sale. And if you want to start collecting my work, like silver gel and stuff. Here's some old barbershop prints. Um, these guys, since they're RC, I'm able to offer them at a less expensive price normally, but today it's even more special. They're 36 bucks. So uh, they're gonna ship, they're gonna ship kind of loose, have a little protector around them. Uh, but yeah, 36 bucks each for RC silver gelatin prints. That is today only through midnight Eastern Standard Time, uh, which is pretty cool. But I also have uh, eight by 10 inkjet prints on sale. And I also have all my other normal stuff too. So fiber-based prints are 89, so they're $36 off. And I also have some Kalotype prints that are out there available as well. And what was left over of my platinum. The, uh, oh man, platinum is getting really, really pricey. That's the whole reason I'm doing this Kayla type stuff. All right, let's see how, how we're doing in the chat. Oh, we're up to 46 viewers. Uh, I need to make sure I'm saying hi to everybody that's there. Hey, hello. All right. Oh man, I'm way behind now. Um, Paul, thank you so much. Disco Shrew, Dave, Anthony, Michael, Stuart. Thank you all, everybody. Uh, Preston, Igor, Brad, Mathieu. Hey, Mathieu, I saw your order come in earlier. Thank you so much. All right. Johnny Brown. Hey, Anal Analog with Albie. Oh, wow. We got lots of folks from over in the EU. I I'm glad this was like kind of the right time. Oh, um, so Outdoors for Life on TikTok. I'm over on my uh, YouTube channel uh, streaming. So if you click the link in the description, uh, you can also view multiple different angles. I'm going to try to move the TikTok angle. Uh, sorry, clock app. Uh, this is like I'm trying to juggle a lot of things at once. Um, oh, my goodness. Let's see. Parvez. Oh, thank you so much. 
JP. Oh, wait, JP, have you joined the Cenar gang? Oh, all right, hold on. I have to make sure. I, I wanted to try a thing with the chat because last time that I streamed, I did this really cool thing where I was able to show the chat in the live video and I didn't want to pay a service to do it because I'm cheap. So I'm going to see if this thing works. Uh, give me a sec, I'm gonna to try to pop out the, all right, so if I pop out the chat and audio sounds like it's coming through two microphones. Uh oh, I hope not. Uh, let me check my audio source, but now that you mention it, um, it's, um, I think, hmm. I think it should only be coming through a single source. Um, yeah, I think that's the only thing. It might just be outputting some weird stereotype thing. I'm not too sure. All right, so let's see if I can get my window capture on here. Well, that's, that's one window. Uh, no, I want this window to be captured. Well, why are you doing that? Well, people can see my stream stats. That's kind of cool, <laughs> I guess. Um, I want the other thing pulled up. Can I do that? No, nope, that's the wrong, why is it? Okay, bear with me. Oh my goodness. Jose, Michael, Flores, Max Shoots Film. Oh my goodness, I have so many, so many folks. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this stream justice. Hey out there, everybody. All right. Um, let's see, why is my window capture being super funky? That's the one, that's the one that we want. Hey, there it goes, okay. That's like a little bit better. Nope, that's my... Um, so what I was trying to show you guys was this. I have this little, uh, little overlay thing and sometimes it wants to work, other times it doesn't. So, uh, now I want to capture cursor and I want to show, yeah, something like that. And I remember the last time the pop out window was like really funky. So I'm going to try to make it wider. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, now I've got every, well, why is it cutting off the top? All right, well, I can't pay attention to that for too long. I gotta make sure I'm, I'm paying tribute to the chats. I'm talking to folks. All right, whoa. Um, so what we're gonna start with is the hand coding portion of the process. Oh, <laughs> Mulletman 541, hey, what's going on? I'm also streaming over on YouTube, so if I'm not looking right at the screen, that's what's going on. All right, let's, uh, let's say some high hellos. Uh, we have Mark Full. I didn't know that. Isaac Asimov's birthday is t birthday today, too. That's pretty awesome. All right. Philip, isn't it your birthday as well? I was pretty sure it was your birthday, too. All right. Yes, the Cenar gang is strong. I feel single-handedly responsible for trying to resurrect all of this hype that is Cenar. I think the first person that started talking about it more on YouTube uh, was Nico of uh, the Legend of Nico's Photo Show. Uh, he started talking about his Cenar stuff and showed up in episodes. And uh, I love showing the Cenar some love, but it is—it's chunky. It's big, so it it gets pretty uh, pretty large pretty quickly. Uh, we got more love for the Cenar gang from Simon. Excellent. All right. Is that Helene or Helan? Thank you so much uh, for the birthday wishes. I don't know why it's cutting off people's names in the chat pop up. I'm, I'm trying, guys. All right. Oh man, the C. All right, the CNR is very strong today. I see that. This is very, very good. I sound like Robocop. You know, I think it might be the bandwidth on some of this stuff. Uh, I know I was getting some notifications that my bitrate was dropping, so I'll do what I can to try and uh, try and mitigate that. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> the Cenar Society. The Cenar Society kind of, uh, now, I'm a bit of an anime nerd as well. That kind of reminds me of the Soul Society from Bleach, which is a cool anime that's coming back out here in 2022. All right. Yes, to join the Cenar gang, all you need to do is love Cenar cameras. That is for sure. Hey, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. All right, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. 
north of the border. All right. Thank you, Dan. All right. Kevin, hey, thank you so much for the uh, for the postcard, and uh, I just got uh, all of my all of my Christmas mail. Mail's been like really weird around here, so thank you so much for sending that, Kevin. All right. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Save the photons. Um, Floris, that's a really good question. I don't know if they did buy Cenar. If they did, that means they're only going to go up in price. Hopefully, it's not like an M6. All right. Judah, thank you so much. Sammy, I think, uh, I think Intrepid very much already has, uh, but they're like a really well-dressed street gang, you know? We're kind of like, I feel like the Sinar gang is kind of like that 80s industrial type look. Not quite like, uh, not quite a proper gang, but like you don't mess with them. All right, Ian, hey, it's been forever, man. Nice to see you. All right. The Sinar Breakfast Club, I like that one. Yes, yes, yes. Um... Ciro, yes, please fire away with large format questions. Um, same to you at, in the uh, TikTok chat. Go ahead and hit those likes on there. And uh, yeah, hit me up with any questions you have along the way. And we're, don't worry, we're going to get to the hand coding portion. It's just we're, we're juggling. We're trying some things. All right. Oh, ben, hey, thank you so much. Ben, you are a legend. I do not forget uh, your contributions to the channel. So thank you so much for checking out on the TikTok. All right. Oh, hey, uh, Lore is here in chat. She will be uh, moderating and, you know, uh, assigning comments and all sorts of cool stuff. So, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Hey, we've got Devin here. All right, I'm thinking, let's see. I think I need to catch up a little bit more on some of these comments. It's You guys are getting ahead of me, but I appreciate it. Uh, in fact, how are we doing right now? How's the stream doing? 79 concurrence. Holy crap. Plus what we have on TikTok. Thank you all so, so much for uh, for hanging out. Uh, the whole point of this live stream is a birthday celebration. Don't worry, you're not just going to be seeing my mug the whole time. Well, a lot of the time you will. But I'm also going to be doing some Kalotype prints. I've, I've done some magic of television. I've pre-coated some sheets of paper. This is the same process that I was doing uh, a couple weeks back in the Bob Ross episode. Uh, so, and the reason I can do this is all of my lights here are set to tungsten or incandescent. That means uh, I'm not going to give off any sort of appreciable UV that could expose these. But this is an alternative photographic process, one that needs ultraviolet light and a negative the size of the print you want. It's enlarging is very, very, very difficult with this. It's not impossible, but mostly impossible. Okay, so I've got my hand-coded sheets. Let's see, how else are we doing? Now I know I'm behind on chat. All right. Oh, David, thank you so much. Uh, that, that episode with Tariq was something I've been trying to make happen with him for a very, very long time. Um, if you, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is Large Format Live, part of the Large Format Friday family of, uh, of videos. So if you, if you just go on and type Large Format Friday in YouTube or Google Large Format Photography. Should be one of the top things that comes up. Uh, check it out. We have a whole library. We have four seasons of LFF content. All right, how are we doing? The audio is a little weird. I I got to figure out this audio thing. I think it's, I, I think I'm just getting hampered by OBS on my bit rate. Um, all right, Jarek, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Um, all right, Roger, thank you so much. Um, is there cake later? There's not, but there's plenty of fixer and uh, sodium sulfite. I don't think those are going to be uh, good drinks to chase the birthday treats. All right. Oh, Chris, thank you so much. I, uh, yeah, I had so much fun making that episode with my good buddy Tariq. And, uh, yeah, it's so hard to make like trim down a video into like the bare essence of uh, what you want you know it to cover and lighting is just like this huge balloon uh, of things um, that you could just talk for hours I mean I was there filming with Tariq for like three or four hours and I thought I got the tightest cut possible and I looked at it and it was like 45 minutes I'm like oh my gosh so you know, you can never cover everything in a video but you also never want to do like giant parts to a video where you could you know people just trail off after a part three part four like continuing series like that are rough and you never know how much you know when somebody's going to come in so you know in my mind i have like this chronological order of things i want to do but 
yeah, like you just never know um, where somebody's tuning into a video. Uh, if analytics are anything to go by, you guys watch about 40 to 45% of a given video. So I gotta make sure every ounce of that thing is like chock full. And that's why I did with the Tariq episode. So they're not something I can do every week, but I would like to do videos of that caliber at least once a quarter. So, you know, probably two per season. All right. Uh, this is going to be a shout out for Lore in the uh, in the comments section. Um, Lore's art is amazing, so if you check out um, bagleyarts.com, that will get you to Lauren's website. It's my fiance. She's an illustrator. Overall, awesome person. I'm um, getting a question over on TikTok. What's my favorite film format? My favorite film format is large format, uh, specifically eight by ten, and that's what we're going to be printing from today. So good segue there, TikTok. I brought a selection of eight by ten inch negatives. Don't worry, they're not bare in here. They're also in protectors, but kind of a, kind of a fun little selection of negatives to print from. So this process can be done with digital photos. You could take an iPhone photograph, but you'd still have to create some sort of uh, negative. You could do this with inkjet transparency material, what's known as a digital negative. And those digital negatives, they print pretty decently. So this one's actually a really tricky negative to work with. It's relatively, uh, relatively thin. So we're not doing that one today. Uh, well, we might not. Uh, this is a classic one from the Hocking Hills region. So yeah, eight by 10 is by far my favorite, uh, my favorite format to work with. And if you watch the channel any bit, you know I'm like, uh, it's not like an agenda. I don't want to get everybody into eight by 10, but I want to share the, the fun that is all this hands-on stuff in doing large format photography. All right. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. <laughs> Fendo, thank you so much. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try, guys. I'm gonna try to figure out this uh, this microphone situation. Uh, I don't want it to totally ruin the experience for folks. So, especially because we're we're at like a good you know amount of folks streaming right now. Um, let me see. Oh, you know what? Let me. I think my auxiliary mic is going. Okay. Uh, chat. Tell me, does the microphone sound better now? Are you getting echo from me right now? Hopefully not, but yeah, let me know, you know, uh, cause that's, this is what we were, we're dealing with and I, I don't want, yeah, I don't want to completely ruin the vibe of the, oh, okay, cool. The audio is fixed. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, outdoors for life. Please, please, please try large format. It's, it's surprisingly inexpensive, but it's pay to play. So like you, you buy a camera, you buy the holders, the film, the tripod, the yada yada. But the thing that's pay to play is film. The good news is there's not much of this. There's not like super like crazy interest like there is with 35 millimeter and medium format. So people aren't going like rabid over the cost of some of the materials and you can get out for about the same amount that you put into it. You might, it might cost you a couple hundred bucks, but it would cost more than that to rent the gear to do large format. So consider that when you're jumping in. And I recommend for anybody that's looking to get into large format, you don't have to do eight by 10, despite what you might hear me say, four by five is going to be great. Okay, cool. All right. All right, cool. All right, I feel like we're back feel like we're back in uh, back in good standing with the chat uh, and everything. Carrie, what about foam of hand? Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. We got a question from Tim. Let's, I got a 360 Fujinon. I call it gargantua. Uh, yes, that's that lens. Uh, so the lens in question is the Fujinon 360 millimeter f 6.3. It is a big chonker that sits in a copal number three shutter. In fact, I think I have I have a couple three shutter hanging around here somewhere. I was just busy. Uh, I didn't even finish cleaning up stuff from like two episodes ago. So there's junk all around this dark room. The beauty about live streaming and putting a camera to yourself is you get to show folks exactly what they, uh, what they see. What's behind the scenes is a total hot mess. TikTok's going to see a little bit of this hot mess today, but you guys on YouTube, you're getting the clean version.
I know, Carl. I am I am very guilty of not plugging Laura's illustrations. Laura, go ahead and drop a link in the chat with uh, with all of your awesome awesome work. Uh, oh, okay. Judah's got a good question. Uh, four by five body uh, versus an eight by ten with a reducing back. Is it worth having two bodies? Not. I mean, for me, really, I, I can only shoot like one large format. You can only shoot one camera at a time. I have an eight by 10 body because I started that way and I had access, you know, granted to me to most of this equipment and some of it was just straight given to me. So yeah, that drove me at eight by 10. It kind of offset some of those entry costs. So doing, um, doing anything, you know, excessive, not excessive with eight by 10, but doing eight by 10 was way cheaper for me than if I had to start completely from scratch and pay for all of it. So four by five, is great for a vast majority of stuff, but I do love the contact printing aspect of it to get just a nice large eight by 10 print. So I like going with an eight by 10 with a reducing back because I don't wanna have to like rebuy a bunch of things. I actually don't own a lot of cameras. I own a very, very small number of cameras that fit exactly the format I'm trying to shoot. And then from there, uh, I add like lenses and film, the, the expensive stuff and the stuff that's gonna dictate your look. Cool. All right. Um, Mark brings up a point. Uh, if you do a reducing back on an eight by 10, you may be bellows limited to long and especially on the short side of things. Bellows limitation is just something that happens on cameras. My Takahara, because the front standard can squish in and the rear standard can move up, I could actually feasibly put a 90 millimeter lens on there. Most field cameras that are eight by 10 are not that way. They start at around 120 millimeters. Of bellows and go up which 120 that's like a 21 millimeter type lens so still super wide for most applications all right uh yeah game slate uh shooting large format has become quite 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 expensive and uh, i don't really have a remedy to that except just know you're not going to shoot as much large format as you would from different formats you're not going to be rifling off 12 shots at a time. You're not going to be bracketing three or four shots. You might, but not consistently from, you know, shoot to shoot to shoot. You're going to shoot infinitely less than you would on 35 millimeter, which right now is also going pretty high up in cost. All right. Happy birthday from Dave. David, thank you so much. Oh no, uh, Laura, I need to, I need to maximize this window a little bit more. Can people see? Oh no. I'm trying, I'm trying, Lore. I need your link to be larger. Is it larger now? Yeah, there we go. Bagleyarts.com is the best way to check out Lore's art. I'm going to leave that up for a few minutes while I catch up with chat and then try to transition um, the TikTok chat folks uh, as well as the YouTube to uh, to some hand coding because we got to get, we got to get into this. We got to get busy. Um, all right. Let's see, Michael, uh, do you know anything about the Schneider Technus Select Super Angulon wide angle? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, other than that's expensive. Um, the, yeah, the Super Angulon uh, 165 is big. Um, they didn't used to be that expensive, but over the last few years, they have uh, about two and a half X in price. They're very big. I prefer the Nikkor 150 to the Schneider 165. The 165 is very like front heavy. Um, but still pretty hourglass-like in size. If you're gonna get something that big, I'd rather do the Nikkor. I think it's a little bit wider and a little bit sharper. Uh, the Schneider is from like this, I wanna say it's like the 60s or 70s, but it's still a good one to consider. Um, if this is everybody's first time hanging out here in chat, my name is Matt Marash. This is Large Format Live. We're in my darkroom space. Today's my birthday, and I'm celebrating by making some Kalotype prints and chatting with folks. I also have a print sale going on over on my website. You can go to mirage.com, and I have some prints starting at $36. Um, I also uh, heard from some folks there might have been some shipping uh, issues with the website. So there is a new shipping option for folks in the continental US. It's called birthday shipping. It helps combine some of the weights for shipping. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Um, super chats are great over on YouTube and TikTok, but heck, 36 bucks, you're going to get yourself a print. Uh, but if I do have super chats, what I am going to do today is take uh, the cumulative of super chats and I'm going to turn those into 8x10 RC print giveaways. So yeah, uh, a reward for folks that hang out here and chat today. All right. 
got to give folks, uh, yeah, folks got to give Laura that love. Uh, she is super, super talented. Um, oh, here we go. There's the link that, uh, man, I don't know what's going on with this. All right, the chat integration is good. Could be better. <laughs> we're, we're still getting there. Uh, all right. Matthias, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Um, Amanda, this is a great question. Most affordable soft focus. You know, I, I don't do a lot. I don't do enough in soft focus to make a good call on that. But I always recommended for folks that wanted to do like wet plate collodion and other processes where you need fast glass. I always recommended Heliars and Fujinars, but those aren't very soft. They're they're quite they're quite sharp. Um, for soft lenses, probably projector lenses, like ones that were literally on um, medium format and light, like 127 and 120 projectors. Those lenses are gonna be really simplistic, only a few elements, or maybe even just one meniscus type element, uh, and they're gonna be really dreamy around the edges. I believe there was a gentleman that was actually manufacturing uh, copies of those meniscus type lenses with plastic elements that are actually surprisingly good because all of these old types of soft focus lenses were not coated. Some of the softness is really just all that chromatic aberration that digital photographers and the lenses I'm shooting these things with don't have. Um, so those extra coatings are gonna you know, increase contrast and decrease any of that kind of blooming or softening that we see. So yeah, I, I would say look at like meniscus lenses. Um, if you want fast and soft, that's when you're into like the French territory, like Dahlmeyers and all those other type Petzval lenses. And those can get really, really, really pricey. Da, da, da. All right, Chopper, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Oh, Thomas, that's a great point. Uh, the Fujinon Soft Focus. That one's a little bit different. That's like a modern Fujinon. I think that one has EBC coating, uh, but it's a modern Fujinon, but what they do is they have this diffusion disc. So there's like, there's like this little metal insert and it looks like a sword grate where there's like a big circle and there's all these little circles around it. And it, it, it's very weird, it's very dreamy. I think that one's like based on Imagon, which is another company that did soft focus lenses with these diffusion discs, very weird. All right, burlap and light, hey, hey. All right. Okay. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Hold on. I've, I think I just skipped a whole bunch of, a bunch of the chat. So, hey, Steno Pika. Hey, yeah, that's a, that's a good camera system. All right. Uh, I am missing some chats here. Coco. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Game Slate asks, uh, what do you think about the DIY Hue format cameras guys who popped up recently? I don't know that. Uh, drop drop a link in the chat, or you can shoot me an email, uh, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. I, I want to know more about it. Um, all right. Oh no. We we have def we have gone into the birthday song in the chat. That that is great. <laughs> oh man, folks are having a fun time with this. All right. Whoa, we are, yeah, this, this chat is, we have a lot, a lot of folks hanging out here today. All right, TikTok, thank you guys so much for being very patient and everybody who's, uh, who's tuning in. We are getting to coding. Uh, I'm gonna take one more question from the YouTubes and then we're going to jump over and hand coat some prints because we gotta get printing. When the stuff is exposing in between developments, we'll have time to do more chats uh, and stuff too. Uh, all right. Those diffusion discs are very hard to find, Mark. If, yeah, if you end up with a soft focus lens that doesn't have those discs, really a lot of large format stuff, lenses, camera bodies, holders, you wanna make sure you have as many of the accessories as possible. If you're not sure, hit up either the large format photography forum, any of the large format Facebook groups, or you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. I'm happy to answer, uh, answer that, or at least point you in the right direction to that answer, because I don't have all the answers. All right. Oh, Lauren. Uh-oh. <laughs> Laura sent me a Discord message. How are things going? All right. Hey Jeff, congrats on the new Chamonix. That's uh that's going to be a lot of uh it's going to be a lot of fun. Those Chamonix cameras are just so 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 nice. 
All right, let's see. How, how are we doing here? Cool, all right, we're gonna clear the chat here for a second, try to get caught up, and we're gonna move our camera. I'm gonna move my TikTok-y camera over here. Oh no, that's like, that feels like I'm forever away. Actually, can I zoom it in? Can I give a little, little zoomy action? Oh, we got some zoom action. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna change cameras. Boop. And we are now over to our second camera. Is, is that all showing? Is everybody seeing my second? Oh no, it's not. Oh, whoops. Um, oh, that's why. I need to be in switcher mode. There we go. Okay, now, oh, why is my camera angle? There we go. There's my camera angle. Now everybody can see what's going on with the printing. So this is just a piece of, of galvanized. And this sheet of galvanized is so I can have um, some of these magnetic pieces right here. That helps me slap down my paper. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to hand coat some pieces of this stuff. This is my Hanamula Platinum Rag. I absolutely adore this paper. It is so, so nice. Lots of fun. It is very, it is a very shiny surface. <laughs> All right. So somebody has mentioned that the large format forum has been down for about a week. Um, their security certificate expired. Um, you can open a private tab in, I think, Firefox or Chrome and just allow the security settings and you should push through no problem. I don't think it's an actual security issue, but yeah, it's just they didn't renew their certificate. So um, you can also clear your cookies and re, uh, reauthorize the site and you should be able to get back on there. I noticed that it was down legit for a few days and then I just signed back in with my phone and uh, all, was, all was good. Okay, so anyway, Hanmeo Platinum Rag. We're gonna coat that here in a second. Uh, what we need to do is mix up some sensitizer. Sensitizer is the stuff that's gonna see the UV light. I've got my lovely Pyrex shot glass. This is like, this thing is the goat of this whole dark room. I do so, so much with just this glass alone. It's great for swirling and mixing things. And it's pretty decent. It's not like super precise. If I needed super precision, I would get a micro pipetter, but it does milliliters pretty well. So what we're gonna do, uh, I need equal parts ferric oxalate. Now, this is an old Bostick and Sullivan one. I mix it myself from powder, and this stuff, you have to have, uh, well, you need, it takes a long time for this stuff to go into solution. It actually looks pretty cool. I'm gonna crack it up some, I'm gonna crack an old one open real quick here. So, oh, that's silver nitrate. Where's my oxalate? Oh, I have some. Here we go. This is a really old thing of ferric oxalate I have. Guys, if you're doing this at home, make sure you have like a painter's mask on because this powder is nasty stuff. But I want to show everybody on camera what it looks like. It's like, should be green. Ooh, it's like this green powder. And the reason that I have this tape on the outside of it is because this electrical tape kind of gives you an extra little moisture barrier. This stuff is pretty old. It should still mix up pretty well. But that stuff takes forever to go into solution in water. You need to mix it at least 24 hours ahead of time. I mixed this stuff uh, a few weeks ago, and you just gotta shake the devil out of it uh, because otherwise it does not flow and has like little chunks in it. So this is my ferric oxalate. So I need equal parts green stuff, and then equal parts silver nitrate, which is my other sensitizer, which is what's gonna make it light sensitive and make it a silver process. All right. Has did chat go down? Uh-oh, now I feel like chat went down. Chat, are you, are you still with me? Chat, blink twice. Oh no, I lost chat. We just hit 100 folks and I lost them. Oh no, hopefully they're still around. Oh, okay, everyone's still here. Great, 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 okay. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, cool. I wanted to make sure I didn't lose everybody. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, good, that means maybe I was saying something that was like enthralling or something, I don't know. Anyway, so we have ferric oxalate 
and silver nitrate. It's a coat in 8 by 10 inch sheet of paper. I'm going to need 18 to 19 ish drops each. So, get my dropper, and we're going to come out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And 19 for good measure. This stuff is so much more inexpensive than platinum palladium. An extra drop isn't going to kill me. But in platinum palladium, I lose my house. <laughs> All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Cool. All right. So the next thing I need to do. Give her a little swirly. And next, I'm going to get my hockey brush ready. Now, my hockey brush, this is the brush we need for hand coating. Hey, we got some. Dave, thanks for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it, Taylor. Hey, Nick, thanks for stopping by, man. Oh, Uh-oh, Brian, Brian getting... Getting the chat all fired up with the NFT talk. Any of these be available as non-fungible tokens? Oh man, ooh, he's bullish on me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, no, uh, Brian knows how I feel about these. Now I will say I'm, I'm not as vocal as some other large format photographers on social media, but I don't exactly disagree with their stance. You also don't see me saying GM every single morning of my life, that's for sure. Um, David, yes, let's coat together. Okay, so this is just sitting in some distilled water, just making sure that the bristles are wet. You don't want them to be dripping. And I'm gonna take my towel and dry that off right there. There we go. Once this is nice and dry, not dry, but like not, you know, no spare drops, we are pretty much ready to coat. So then, my brush here, and get my paper. And I'm just going to use the very edge of these magnets to hold down the very edge of the paper. It just ends up being a nice little reference point. I need to recheck my composition to make sure I'm not, not losing anybody here. Cool. All right. <laughs> Lord, don't worry. Brian's, Brian's okay. He's, he's fine. All right. Uh, Roger, that is a really good point. Yes, toned... Oh, very well toned, rinsed, and uh, printed kale type is nearly indistinguishable from a platinum palladium. And that's kind of what I'm going for, because I went to re-up my chemicals, and the cost was like, it was egregious. It was something like three times what I paid for just a few years ago. So I was like, I have to find something different. People have been telling me to do kale types for years, and uh, you guys in the comments usually have some pretty good suggestions, so I took to that. Now, one thing to do if you're not confident at a certain print size, you just grab a negative, don't worry, it's in a protector, and just kind of lay it out and see where, you know, see where things are going to end up. I have to get really close to the edges here and here, but I got a lot of extra wiggle room at the top and bottom, so I'm just going to move those in a little bit. Cool. All right. Oh my goodness, Devin, you are a madman. Stop it. But that means between Devin and Brian's ridiculous super chat contributions, so we just got a big super chat over on YouTube, um, we are going to be giving, oh my goodness, these super chats. Guys, you need to stop this. Oh my, now I need to give away how many? Let's see. I need to give away four. I need to give away five prints. Laura, you're going to have to keep track in the chat. <laughs> I know, this is wild. Oh my goodness. Yes. All right, I'm going to start coding this up here, and I'm going to have to start paying, paying some service to the folks with these with these super chats. Oh my goodness. All right, let's get coding. I got a little bit of, a little bit of sediment going on here. I don't know what that is, but it'll, it'll buff out. All right, so we're moving up and down. Oh no, I don't know what that streakiness is. Maybe some excess silver or something on there. Oh well. Brush it down, brush to the left, brush it up. So I do have a bit more of a puddle forming than I want. That's okay. We're just going to keep pulling it out to the sides. Pull it down, 
This is not a 100% level of working surface. That probably has something to do with it as well. But we have a few more minutes here. I don't have to worry about this streaking. There we go. Pulling her down. Go. Pull her out. Okay. Okay, I need to make sure I'm getting close enough to the edges on these sides here. There we go. A little extra on the outside isn't going to kill us. This isn't platinum. Oh, by the way, uh, back to that comment on toning with platinum. Toning with platinum is still kind of expensive because, from what I've read, the toner can be reusable, but it's a very diminishing returns type of thing. And platinum toner, you actually have to go through it at two to three times the exhaustion rate of just doing normal platinum prints. So I feel like it almost defeats the purpose, but I don't know. I have to experiment more with toners. I haven't even played with gold chloride yet, which, yes, gold chloride is another toner that you can use. It just sounds like these processes were designed to designed to waste money. But another kind of observation I've made, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but just kind of like what I've noticed making these, these prints and doing all this hand coating, the more stable or the more noble the metal you're working with in the process, the more consistent things are. So even though I, I am really like infatuated with kalotypes at the moment, if money was no object, I would probably be all platinum palladium because the consistency from print to print is just like, it's amazing. I love, love, love how consistent it is. Oh, this sheet is coating very, very, very nicely. We're doing really, really good. Okay. Cool. Chat, I will be there momentarily, I promise you. That's a pretty good coat. I think I want a little ham on the sensitizer, but that's okay. Whatever that little bit of sediment was, I think it's gone. Kind of like, it really did buff out. Okay, so at this stage, we don't see as much streaking because the sensitizer is starting to dry. It is cold and pretty dry in here. I'm just going to pull these up, and I'm just going to do some big brushes. The edges, fancy up the corners, give us a little extra brush stroke. And there we go, we have a nice coated calotype. Well, coated piece of paper. It's not a calotype. Till I, till I make a kale type. Okay, what's what's we're checking back in. We have, oh my goodness, what the heck? All right, we have Devin, uh, who has just contributed three giveaway prints. We have Brian, who has contributed to the next portion of a giveaway print. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We got Judah. So between Brian and Judah, we have another we have another giveaway print. So that's we're at four. Uh, Carl chiming in for some more on the giveaway prints. Oh my goodness. Got them. It's true. Laura, you are going to be... You're going to be working a little bit today. You're going to be keeping track of these giveaway prints. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to throw this up in the chat and then immediately pull it down because if you know, you know. Uh, that's This is the... the Graham's comments, this is my Twitter feed every morning for the last year and a half. Like, I don't want to block that text because it's it's innocuous, but like I know what it means. I know what it signifies. Uh, yeah, let's make some happy little prints. All right. Oh my goodness. Save the photons. Thank you so much. Uh, that's, we're, up, we're up to another giveaway print. Um, yeah, uh, the whole the whole shtick, but be uh, for this show is keeping uh, keeping photography uh, somewhat alive and these older processes somewhat alive. Whoa, that's like way too close to my face now. Oh, Gelo, sorry, Gelo sounds. Yeah, uh, greetings. I'm saying hi to the folks over on TikTok because they're showing me some love right now. I, I can't can't be ignoring them. Um, oh, uh, Outdoors Life asks, is there a, sp a certain reason I'm using this hockey brush to coat prints? And that's a really good question. Um, hockey brushes tend to have these nice little, these nice little bore bristles. And they're like, 
very soft and they give you like these really nice fine lines when you coat on the paper. You don't have to use this. You can actually use like a foam dollar store brush, which is great. The foam brushes also need to be soaked for a longer time in distilled water because they, they just naturally want to just drink up whatever they have. And if you're using expensive metal, you're gonna, yeah, be missing a lot of money very, very quickly. So just keep that in mind uh, with whatever type of brush you're using. But I like this one. It makes me feel like I'm doing something creative. Um, but yeah, you can use any type of brush. You can also use a, um, a little glass rod or a plexiglass rod called a puddle pusher. Those do a really good job for hand coating as well. Okay. Cool. Uh, Roger, big fan of the Golden Thyorrhea. Those are really good toners. Thyorrhea, I mean, just the name of it makes my nose kind of ache because, yeah, just the smell. Whew. It's rough. Josh, hey, hey, how's it going out there? I'm, I'm getting there, Laura. I am very, very behind. Jay, thanks so much for the five. Appreciate it. Oh my goodness. So Cornelius, this is a really, uh, a really good point. Um, says. Carboner gum prints should be relatively inexpensive. Uh, they are, but they also require more setup, more space, and just kind of overall a lot more tools. It's not a bad thing, but it does take a lot more time and dedication. If you want to see like peak examples of carbon photography, I would look at the work of Calvin Greer. He has re really kind of resurrected the color carbon process. Um, another kind of the, the OG that I can think of that's still around doing it, uh, Todd Gangler. Uh, of ultra stable process. He has really good work in carbon and then there's a lot of gum photographers. I don't know too many of them or, or follow a lot of their work, but it's the same thing where you have multiple layers and you control so many things, but it's like an effort commitment beyond what even like a full-time job is for most people. Um, hey, how's it going? Thank you, thank you for the birthday wishes. Okay. Oh, uh, Chopper asks, uh, do I buy silver nitrate by the pound? Um, you don't have to buy silver nitrate by the pound, but I do have some recommendations of places to purchase it. Um, where is it? Da, 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 da. So there are a lot of places you can purchase this. Bostick and Sullivan uh, Photographer's Formulary. Uh, I found, I was turned on to a, another site that's also ACS or American Chemical Society certified uh, for buying silver nitrate, and that is Artcraft Chemicals. They're located in upstate New York, and they have, uh, they give you the ability to buy anywhere from like 100 grams and up but you can buy it by like the pound or kilo. But if you buy too much, you're gonna end up on a list. Like you, if you buy enough of the right type of chemicals, you will actually get a call, here in the US at least, you'll actually get a call from the DEA saying, hey, what are you doing? Uh, it was pretty like easy. And uh, I do um, occasionally get asked for additional screening before I fly, but otherwise uh, it's fine. So don't do anything nefarious with this stuff and you'll, you'll be okay. All right, da da da. Oh, Richard, I would say I was kind of afraid of really diving more into these alt processes. That's why I started out easy with cyanotype, but kind of like what I mentioned earlier, the different metals in it. Um, for some reason, cyanotype, I could just never get like consistency. So back in May of 2021, I did this crazy uh, print sale with these little strudel prints. And I had to make about two and a half times as many as print orders that I received because they were just so wildly inconsistent. It was more like kind of everything was a one of. Kalotypes are kind of, they're not they're not as inconsistent as cyanotype, but they're not as dead on consistent as the platinum palladium. So it's a balance. All right. Taylor, that's a really good question. How much for a print? Um, so Today, and literally today only, um, Kalotype prints, you can find them on my site. They are normally $150. Um, I think they are like $125 or something today. So if you want something that's still going to last a little bit more than a silver gelatin RC print, about as long as a silver gelatin fiber print, head over to mirage.com slash prints. Uh, and if that is a little too rich for your blood, RC prints are 
$36, which are just like your standard kind of glossy silver gelatin. They have a great look to them. Uh, I also have inkjet prints that are 8x10 size for $36. Bucks. But uh, hopefully Laura's keeping track of these super chats because our chat has, has hit threshold for giveaways on there. I don't know how I'm going to manage these giveaways, but we're, we're giving away prints because I said we were. So, yeah. All right. Where are we doing? How are we doing here? <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is one of my D&D &D friends, Kitty. So thank you for the happy birthday wishes. Um, let's see. Chopper, thank you so much. I love doing the infrared stuff. The only downside about the infrared, uh, the film is very expired. It's relatively high speed infrared film and it does not handle aging very well. So none of those, unfortunately, can I make an alternative photographic process print from, from the actual negative. I have to create a digital negative or do inkjet prints. So it's my only regret with the infrared film. Otherwise, it's one of my favorite types of film to shoot. Martin from Germany, thank you so much. Hey, hey, um, Max asks, will I ever do anything with dry plates? Maybe. Uh, I do have a darker roommate, Mr. Stephen Takis, who is a fantastic photographer who is one, I, one of the more prolific folks with dry plates that I know. Uh, personally, I've shared this darkroom space here with him uh, for quite a few years. I will defer to him for expertise, though. I am just not the greatest uh, with that. Um, Slashy wishes a happy birthday. Thank you, Slashy. Oh my gosh. Ted. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the 15 on the super chat. I really, really, really appreciate it. Oh, the super chats just keep coming. I, I don't even know. We might be up to six, uh, six prints right now. I am not too sure. Oh my goodness. I uh, wish you would test the... Sh uh, Ted, I'm not sure what that is. Is that Chamonix? Is that... Who makes an enlarger? I know Intrepid makes an enlarger kit, but I don't know this this other one. Um, yeah, bring it on. I mean, I like doing stuff with enlargements, so I, I don't see why not. That, that could be something cool to test. Uh, Travel, hey, thanks for the birthday wishes. appreciate it. Uh, oh my goodness, we're at over 100 folks. Thank you so much for everybody's tuning into Large Format Live. I'm going to coat one more print, and then we got to get exposing. Nate! Thank you so much for picking up a print on this birthday sale. I've got a feeling I'm going to be in the darkroom for weeks filling out those orders, and that makes me so happy because it's what I like to do. This is this is what I've kind of always wanted to do is hang out in the darkroom. So, so, so cool. All right. Uh, Thomas asks, have I ever tried wet light collodion? Um, the Boskin Sullivan kit is the way to go. Yes, buy that one. It's a great starter kit. Uh, make sure you mix up the chemicals more than a few days, at least 24 hours before you get going. I've seen some folks order the kit assuming they'd be able to use it instantly, and they're not. So just just keep an eye on that. Um, all right. Hey, William, happy bir happy early birthday, and thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. All right. Hey, Mike, how's it going, man? You're gonna have to come up here in the dark room sometime, hang out, do some printing. I may need to have you up here as a dark room assistant anyway, because. I feel like I'm going to be making some prints here for a while. All right. Okay. Uh, one last one in the chat, and then we're going to jump to uh, back to hand coating one more print. Uh, how's the... Very, very cool. All right. I'm going to move my tiktok -y camera right, right there. Hopefully that's not, like, too nauseating for the TikTok folks at home. I'm going to double tap. Oop. Are we over on the other camera yet? Hopefully. Very cool. Mike, yeah, step on in, man. Happy to host. All right. Uh, one more sheet of some Hanamula. Oh, no. I'm not going to use this sheet. Too torn of a corner. That's the only thing about using the, uh, the deckled edge ruler. Uh, that ruler is unforgiving. If you don't put the like the perfect amount of pressure on, all bets are off. All right. So bring this guy right here. Bring this guy right here. Okay. Overlay an eight by ten, so I know what I'm going for. Even though I've done this forever, guys, it's still just a good idea to have get a visual on what you're doing. 
All right, let's mix up some sensitizer. And also check out our chat. How's chat doing? Whoa! Jeff, I appreciate your contribution. You guys don't feel obligated to do super chats, but the super chats will be turning into... Whoa! Oh no, my TikTok camera. It died. There we go. Sorry about that, TikTok. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. But don't worry, super chats are totally optional. Those are going to turn into giveaway prints. Uh, I'm going to have Lore get details uh, for giveaway winners. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Perfect. Okay. Oh, well, I don't want to don't code over that. That'd actually be kind of cool. Coding a non... Coding a non-standard paper. Uh, a few years ago, I did uh, purchase this... Uh, there was a group purchase for this Barita paper, which is the same paper that's used for silver gelatin. Um... I tried hand coating that for, I think I was using it for carbon at the time. It was pretty cool, but man, it was, it was a lot. Um, it was a lot to uh, try and manage because that paper, the smoother the surface is, the more like unforgiving marks and little dents and stuff are. So, get this ready. Go. Okay, here we go. Even a paper like this, even though it's like, it's watercolor, but it's a hot press, so it does have some, it's a little bit smoother than others. Some watercolor papers have more texture, and they just give you that really, they have like a tooth to them. They look really cool. Alright. Oh, this is going to be a weird coat. That's fine. I'm trying to maneuver this camera so you guys can see everything on the live stream it is funky. Nothing ever prepares you for the live stream like doing the live stream. So that's the only reason I do these. It helps keep my reps. If you're just now tuning in, welcome to Large Format Live. I'm coding some, hand coding some paper for an alternative photographic process called the Kalotype. Kalotype is an ultraviolet sensitive process, meaning it needs sunlight or UV light from an artificial source in order to expose onto this metal to form a picture. It's quite the fun process, and it's meditative, and you know, it really makes me feel like I can create something. To do this process, all you need are some photos and some negatives, either negatives made in camera with pretty high contrast, or digital negatives that you create using Photoshop and printing out onto an inkjet transparency material. There's great digital negative starter kits available at bostickandsullivan.com. Uh, this isn't sponsored by them, they're just really good folks and they do, they do great work. I like sending business to folks that do that. All right. Anyway, alternative photographic processes. Um, they're all, there's a lot of processes, they're all a little bit different, but they, they're all kind of like a remix of each other too. Coat light sensitive stuff onto surface, add specific developer to get the image out, after giving it ultraviolet light, and then do some sort of washing to make it a more archival or permanent print. And voila, you have an alternative photographic process print. All right, we're coming to the tail end of our coating. Pull a magnet off. Pull the other one off. All right, I'm just gonna check it. A couple big swipes. There we go, fancy up the corners. If you don't like brush strokes, you don't need to do that bit at the end, but I think it's fun. So there we go. One more coated piece of paper. Switch it back to this camera right here. That's our print. Um, all right, chat is getting flooded with comments, so let's see how we're doing. All right, Daryl, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Josh, same thing. Appreciate it. Uh, salt printing, it's, it's all very, very similar. Like... Uh, if you buy enough silver nitrate to mix up more than 50, 60 milliliters of uh, of your solution, yeah, you should try a whole bunch of these different processes. They all 
they all kind of feed into each other and kind of inform one process. So if you can do a cyanotype, you can do a variety of these other processes. It's, uh, it's a kind of a fun thing to try and manage, too. Um, ah, good tip, Mark. Uh, yeah, if you want to get a sense for all these different types of papers, I recommend uh, going to an art supply store. Uh, one of my favorite places to go to is Dick Blick, uh, or Blick Art Materials here in Columbus. They're awesome, and they have just so many cool things. I am the kind of person that goes in, opens the drawers, and starts feeling up all the paper. Just ask Laura. She usually has to pull me, uh, pull me away from feeling up all the papers. All right. Oh my gosh, we've uh, I've been due for a meetup for a while now, going on years, but yeah, there's going to have to be a meetup sometime. Oh, TikTok, hello. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm ignoring you guys. Hello. And Laura's hanging out in the chat there too. Laura, you're doing God's work today. Thank you so much. Um, yes, yeah, so we used to do FPP meetups a long time ago. I, hopefully, once again, there will be some sort of FPP meetup. I uh, can't wait for the time when that may be. Um, all right. Roger, I'm not too sure. Calotype, Kalotype, Kaylee type. Um, I, I've been saying Calotype, but I was somebody uh, reminded me in the comments that um, of the Bob Ross video that there's also the Calotype or yeah, Calotype, C-A-L-O type process. So I, I've, I've heard that one Calotype, and I've heard this one Kalotype or Calotype. I don't know. I am not much of a wordsmith. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've worked with Greg in the past. He's a great guy. He organized that uh, print meetup that we did for the uh, for the YouTube channel. So, yeah, I'm happy to work with him for that. That'd be cool. Um, Tyler, or Taylor, that's a really great question. Could I do this Kalotype process on Canvas? I don't see why not. It's possible. The only downside would be having the image, like, kind of hold, but also getting contact pressure. So a contact prick process also means that I'm just kind of squishing down a negative to that. So you would have to use probably something like a vacuum table um, or something to urge a ton of weight from like a compression spring to make sure you have proper contact. Because if there's any little pits and valleys, you'll get these weird little spl uh, like splotches of out of focus area. It almost looks like the print looks like there's drops of water on it kind of diffusing the focus. It's very odd. And if I ever see weirdness in a print, I know it's because I didn't have enough good contact, but that's a great question. Alex, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. All right. <laughs> do you even shoot 35 millimeter, bro? Uh, I do. Not as much as I should, but I shoot a little bit of it. Uh, I also, uh, I work at Midwest Photo. Oh, they're not even showing up on my apron here, but I work at Midwest Photo here in Columbus, Ohio. I develop black and white film for their black and white film orders, and sometimes I'll throw in a roll or a test roll of 35 millimeter, but it's not like my primary medium. Time is so, so, so precious, and I have less and less of it thanks to doing stuff like this, but in that instance, um, by the time I get time to do the kind of shooting I want to do, I'm like, well, I might as well do the biggest thing I can, and it's usually the 8x10 by, by that time. Slashy! Thank you so much for the birthday wishes, Slashy. I miss you. All right. Uh, Roger says, Burr caught 320 is great for kale types in the process of printing. Um, nice. Yeah, Burr caught 320. That's been like a classic one. Um, and then there's like Arches Platine. Um, I like the Fabriano, except Fabriano uh, needs to be treated because it has like a, I think it has like a basic buffer in there. So you need to hit it with a little bit of an acid neutralizer to prepare the paper to work. But yeah, all good working stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Well, I'm going to clear this up. Uh, I'm going to quickly head out to print my our, our first negative of the day. Um, I think I saw an order come in for this certain print, so I'm going to print that one. Try to try to do a little double duty. I know. How dare I? Uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so this was a shot I did at Ash Cave in the Hocking Hills region um, a little over a year ago. This is on some, H, uh, some Ilford HP5. 
a lot of people don't give Ilford the credit they deserve for creating good, like being able to create good negatives. I've been able to tune these negatives into the alternative photographic process. I think like stand, if you treat this film at box speed, you're not going to get the density you want. I tend to overexpose this film and overdevelop it a little bit. So I shoot HP5 at ISO 200, and then I will also develop it out a little more aggressively. I use a weird staining developer called Pyrocat HD. That's why there's like this amber kind of color to the negative, but it turns out pretty decently. So I'm going to print this. I think we need about five minutes. So I'm going to... Hmm. Okay, cool. I'm just checking things here. I'm going to... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try... I'm going to see how the be right back... Uh, see how the be right back works. And we're going to be right back. I'm going to get some, uh, some printing going. In the words of my buddy Michael Rosso, hey, we're back. Oh, did I lose a light? Oh no. Oh, I lost a key light. And I think I know why. There we go. There's our light back. All right, uh, chat, how are we doing? How are we hanging here, guys? Let's see. I know, the timing was perfect comedic and everything. Whoa, 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 I missed a super chat. Thank you so, so much. Okay, um, I think once this first print develops, we're going to go ahead and do a, a chat-based giveaway. Um, we'll see... We'll see how we do with it. I'm uh, I'm not 100% that it's going to uh, it's going to work out. Uh, I might even do the I'm thinking of a number because, yeah, I've I've never tried this before and I've only got poor lore uh, managing so so much at once. So yeah, we might do the I'm thinking of a number for giveaways here. Um, my clock, my Grey Lab timer is counting down right now. We are a few more minutes out. Um, while I've got that going, I'm going to get my area over here cleaned off so we can get ready for developing. So galvanized is not stainless steel. So what does that mean? That means it stains. You need to make sure this stays clean and dry. If it doesn't stay clean and dry, you're going to have a big old rusty magnetic piece of iron here in a little bit. Oh, here. Let's tick tock. Hello. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Okay, so I've got my tray. Now the developer for this is a chem is not FPP Super Mono Bath. I try to recycle these though. This is a solution of sodium citrate, and sodium citrate. Uh, you can also use platinum plating developers. Uh, uh, a popular one for that is known as uh, ferric oxalate. 
Um, I just shook this up, which is going to make it kind of brown and nasty, uh, but that's fine. Uh, I should be able to get a good amount of mileage out of this developer. We'll take a look at what the print looks like after the right amount of exposure time. I don't anticipate it being like a, um, a negative that needs extra contrast added, but who knows? It might. Um, cool. All right, let's see how chat's doing. Um, moody stream. <laughs> uh, let's see. Julian, thank you so much for, oh, Julian, thank you so much for the, uh, uh, the well wishes. I appreciate you. All right. <laughs> uh, if you have, if you have clock app, I'm also streaming over on clock app because why not? Let's not make life, uh, any easier than it needs to be. Right. All right. Um, I've got about 30 seconds left on my primary uh, exposure so we'll see how it goes but this is one that we're going to need um, uh, we're going to need a drum roll for for sure all right Abel thank you so much for the birthday wishes Simon uh, see now I know I know the, o the OG FPP is show what show okay um, I'm gonna be right I'm not gonna do the be right back but I'll be right back space and can you see what it looks like it's like a very faint kind of ghost image and this ghost image all the detail is there but the areas sorry whoops the border from the negative kind of forms this almost like solarized overexposed area and this is going to be running into like deep deep shadow that's fine solarization like definitely occurs it happens okay I know, where's the strudel cam at? It's, well, it's not here right now. Strudel can't be in the darkroom. There's too many things to lick, and they're all going to kill him. So, uh, not great. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. All right. Ah, yes. Let's get that drum roll going for the Kayla type first print. Printout processes, heck yes. Uh, just mixing my, uh, Anthony asks, mixing my first batch of Pyrocat HD, any advice? Um, Kodak TXP320, you can shoot it at 320, maybe, you, some folks like to still cut it in half, so you can go 160 or 200, that'll be fine. I've shot TXP320 at 320, but I use a slightly more aggressive concentration, 1.5 parts A, 1.5 parts B to 100 parts water, I find that's the best mix, but I will say, if you shoot on T-Max 320, or not T-Max, uh, Tri-X 320, you're going to be addicted. You're going to love it. And I've never regretted taking a shot on Tri-X. I've regretted the, the money I had to spend, but never the actual results. So keep that in mind. It's amazing stuff. All right. Boy in Blue, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Joey, yeah, thanks, man. All right. Oh, good call. TikTok. Hey, folks. Sorry to keep you waiting. There's a uh, there's the print we just uh, we just exposed, and we're gonna develop it here. I'm actually gonna change my camera angles, and I'm gonna clear chat for now. But you can keep asking questions. But it's time. It's time to develop out a print. Now, one thing I I was informed I've been doing not long enough on this process is. Um, developing the print long enough. I'm hearing eight to ten minutes is lowballing it. Some people go like a full 20 minutes. That sounds like a crazy long time to me, but I trust you guys more than I trust myself doing this just for like a few minutes at a time. So we're going to develop this out for eight minutes, but I'm not going to leave it in the tray here for eight minutes. All right, I'm going to put ten and change on the clock. I'm going to need a drum roll in the chat. You, you know, actually, I'm going to drop the drum roll, but... Uh, send some likes over on uh, you folks over on TikTok, and here we go. The image is going to start to form almost instantly. Should be a fun one. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. 
Oh, that is never going to get old. The one thing I love about processes like calotype and platinum palladium, zyotypes, you just get oh, that satisfying instant just splash of cool final looking print. This looks, oh man, this is like, this is pretty much right where I want it. I love this negative. I, I might make one more from this negative, but I, 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 I owe you guys at home some variety as well. Oh man, this looks great though. Very, very cool. All right, so I might have to make an executive decision here. Uh, folks over on Clock App, over on TikTok, I'm going to have to end stream because my battery's like dying and then all other battery chargers are occupied at the moment. But uh, this is a good time to end the TikTok live stream and I'll tackle a few more questions from folks. TikTok, thank you so much everybody for tuning in. I appreciate y'all. Okay, so TikTok has ended. I appreciate you. Um, okay. How are we doing over here? Oh, yeah. The glug. Yes, the glug is real. You want to keep this moving. The big thing with developer... Got to keep this moving to make sure any excess sensitizer... Uh, rinses out of those highlights. Uh, I have been very guilty of letting too much yellowing occur in my prints, and you know, that yellow staining is like, it's excusable, but it, you know, it doesn't look good either. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure you're moving this developer around. You don't want to let it sit and get stale. Okay, keep that moving. Um, <laughs> Cornelius, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Max Shoots Film asks, will I ever do a video on Pyrocat? I have really, really mixed feelings about doing uh, content promoting Pyrocat HD because I, I respect and appreciate um, the environment, and I also don't want people hurting themselves. Pyrocat HD is a major carcinogen. Um, the, major, the main ingredient to it, uh, catechol or pyrocatechin, is like super cancer. The amount that you need to make a liter of concentrated, uh, of uh, yeah, of concentrate, is enough to become pesticide for fifty thousand acres of farmland. Just think about that. A whole a whole county in the Midwest can be, you know, can you can get rid of pests in farmland over the course of a few like a few hundred miles, not a few hundred miles, sorry, a few dozen square miles. That's, that's too much. That's a very, very nasty ingredient. It is easy to neutralize, but it, it's cumulative. In how much of it enters your system, it's a cumulative uptake. So you don't want this stuff getting on your skin uh, or just potentially uh, breathing in too much of the uh, undissolved powder. So it's, it's, a, it's very nasty stuff, and I just I don't recommend it uh, that much. I only like it because it gives me negatives that print like this, but if the cost is your health and well-being, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not super huge on recommending that. Um, Alright, how are we doing on this stuff? Um, whoa, save the photons! Thank you so much for buying, uh, buying that print. Alright, so... Fun fact, there's a few prints on my website right now at mirage.com slash prints that are one-ofs. Like, they are, they are actually never being made again. And that's one of them. So you don't just have a print. You have a super, super unique print that no one else on planet Earth is going to have again. Um, that was when I was, like, young and stupid, and uh, I had access to an 8x10 and larger, and I was like, what would happen if I just start slapping toners down. I had blue toner, I had brown toner, I had sepia, and I started mixing and matching. I ruined a ton of paper, but you now are the proud owner of a unique, actually enlarged 16 by 20 print. So, thank you so much. All right. Carl, I'm right there with you. Yeah, uh, help the environment. There are much more ec uh, ecologically friendly uh, materials that are out there.
uh, Abelas, our other uh, Pyrogallo is uh, is also kind of toxic, but it's not. I don't think it's on the same level as um, as Catacol. <laughs> Rob Melgang, yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot of developers that are out there that aren't too too terrible. Um, look, I'm not saying I am surprised that I made it to 36, but I'm quite surprised I made it to 36. So I'm celebrating. Um, yeah, you know, there's uh, there's a great article I found over on the large format, um, the large format photography group. Um, it's called "Confessions of a Magic Bullet Chaser," and it's a great kind of comedic take at what lengths we photographers will do to become better without doing the things that we need to do to become better. Um, you know, I bought the thing, I bought the book, I bought the print, I did this. Why am I not good yet? Because because you got to go out and shoot. So that's uh, that's another part of it. Um, let's see. All right, how are we doing? Richard, thank you so much. Yeah, this print is looking pretty good. I actually want to jump over to the print camera uh, real quick. And I want to mention, um, remember that area outside the border of the print, that rebate area? Now, you see that's actually lighter than the dark portion of the print? That's called solarization. That part will actually go away once we get into our fixer and toner steps. But for now, it's kind of an eyesore. But don't worry, it will, uh, it will kind of, kind of go away. The battery's getting low for this uh, this Kayla type cam, but I think, uh, yeah, I have some other thick negatives. I want to make uh, I want to make a few more Kayla types. So I'm gonna throw another one in the hopper and see how we're doing. Um, let's see. <laughs> David, thanks, man. I. Uh, some days I feel young, but other times I feel like I am falling apart, and the, the big lord format camera uh, doesn't help necessarily help with that. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. All developers are non-toxic, which they don't have to be non-toxic to taste them. You just can't drink that much of them. Uh, <laughs> this brings up a story I think I mention on every live stream, but it's my favorite one. My old darkroom roommate, his name is Danny. Uh, he's still alive too, so. It's good. Uh, he um, knew most of the chemicals in his supplies. He didn't have any labels. He knew them by taste, which is terrifying. But hey, that's that's how he that's how he rolled. Uh, and also, one time I, I was experimenting with wet plates, and I had some leftover Everclear that I went to like this party store. And I had to go drive to Indiana to buy it. And when I got back into the dark room, like it was gone. And I was like, Danny, did you? did you use some of this Everclear? He's like, oh no, I thought you were having a party. And like, so he was just like tanking straight Everclear, like the 95% stuff. So, um, quite the party animal. I think he's settled down now, but still skating. So, cool guy. Um, let's see. Thomas, um, I don't think that was the only thing causing that, but it sure didn't help. Um, the old daguerreotype process involved gold chloride and involved fuming, fumed mercury onto nickel-plated, um, yeah, plates, like, just like inviting all of the dangerous stuff in one, uh, one helpful little place. Um, all right, I just have to keep babying and, and nursing the, uh, that developer that's in there. Oh, it's looking good. Okay, cool. Let's see how... Lore asks, isn't caffeine all coffee? Yes, it is. In fact, the crappier the coffee you use, the better. Uh, I'm not sure if Sanka counts, but yeah, like Nescafe, that stuff makes great um, makes great caffeine. I think you need some caffeine, some vitamin C, and some washing soda or some uh, sodium carbonate. Is it sodium? No, it's potassium carbonate, I think, for that one. But yeah, you need uh, you need a washing soda, you need an acid, and you need some coffee. It gets activated. It smells like burned hair, so be ready for that. But caffeine works pretty well. All right. Yes, lore is always on me about sensitivities and things of that nature. Um, all right. I think I'm going to get another print going. Um, that's a classic Hawking Hills one. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do another Hawking Hills classic. This is from uh, Cedar Falls. Just another fun one. I made this one. Oh my gosh, this is years ago. I think this one's from like 2014, 2015. It's, it's old, but still prints well. 
The one thing that is potentially risky about using in-camera negatives, you don't want to scratch these because now every print you have is going to have scratches on them. So there's advantages and disadvantages to doing all of these different types of uh, negatives. In-camera negatives, think of them like plates. You're pulling a print from a plate, so like from a copper plate intaglio. You only have so many that you can pull the detail out of uh, before you start to lose like that fidelity. But that's the cool thing of getting in early and getting in a cheap print. All right. How are we doing? Okay, cool. I'm going to lay this on some paper. I think I have another dried sheet here. Oh no, this one got a bit of a got a bit of a kink in it. I think I'm going to use another one. I think all of my sheets are dry by now. Oh yeah, remember that one that had like a little bit of a little bit of streakage? I don't think that's going to show up. So, I'm going to lay this on top of this, throw it into the source, and uh, I will be now we're going to do another, we'll be right back. Hey, we're back. Okay, let's see. How how's chat looking? How's the mood is definitely pretty mellow, uh, but I, I enjoy it like that. You know, um, as soon as I, I had I had the, I always go through old footage and look at stuff, and I'm like, huh, I think this would be really funny if I did like a if I did kind of like a, a bumper. Now, if I had some if I had some more time, I'd probably do like Adult Swim style bumpers or something with a little more comedy to it. But I'll settle for the, the strudel print. That's a pretty good one. All right. There you go. Strudel. There he is. That's why he's not showing up on camera. He's hanging out with Laura. He's helping moderate. If he barks, you're banned. <laughs> Strudel does have the ears. He's He gets away with murder. He really does. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's cut back to... Uh, to our tray. Alright, we're here. Normally I would like pour the developer uh, back in at a time like this, um, but what I'm probably going to do is just pull this print and just move to a rinse that's like adjacent, you know, or next door to it. I also have to watch my clock here. Okay, got some extra magnets hiding. Move those magnets and get a water rinse. Whoops. I don't want it to go in there. I just want it to go in this one. Now, this water does need to be a little bit acidic. It does not need to have much acid in it. Uh, that was a few mils or a dash of acetic acid. You only need citric acid, but a little bit more of it. Uh, this just allows me to make sure I'm rinsing out any uh, any excess uh, any excess sensitizer from that highlight that highlight area. Some folks will do like a pre uh, pre rinse with just water, uh, but if that water isn't uh, doesn't have any acidity to it, if it's a little bit softer, it can actually cause like this this kind of fogging staining look. And I have already witnessed that with this water uh, that we have here. So just. Nothing, more things to keep in mind. I'm going to, oh no, my hands are wet. Oh well. Let's drip off this print. Try to get all of that. Oh yeah, how's that looking, chat? This one's looking pretty good. I think this one I could use a bit more exposure, but hey, we're just having fun today. Oh yeah. They always look best when they're wet, so. Okay. Put that in here. And we should actually see some color tone changing here. It's going to lighten up a little bit. In this, uh, in this acid wash, and that's okay. It's allowed to do that. It's gonna sit in this wash 
where this wash is going to pick up some of the yellow from that sensitizer, it's going to sit in here for about five, six minutes. About half the time that I'll be developing this second print. And speaking of which, I'm going to dry off some hands and get ready to take out that next, that next print. All right, how are we doing? Yeah, Lord, uh, kale types do have a brownish kind of sepia look to them, uh, but that you you can tone that away. We can make it cooler with gold chloride. We can make it a little bit a little bit warmer with um, with rapid selenium toner. There's so many little little fun tricks that we can do to make things nicer. All right, we're jumping to our next camera, Thomas. Thank you so much. Copper tones, gotta love them. All right. Um, I'm going to clear that. Oh, my timer's going off. I'll be right back. Let's grab it. This is going to be a good one. Here we go, folks. How's that looking? Nice little... Nice little exposed image. Joseph, that's a great question. They do dry down, but the dry down's a little bit different. So, of course, there's no gloss on the surface, so it doesn't give a lot of light back. But the the shadows do get a bit duller once, once it dries down. Um, I think you can kind of change that by split toning, so you can, you know, combine various toners um, in the washing process to change things up. But I think this one's going to look pretty good. Um, Oh, that's interesting. I wonder... Oh, maybe my microphone didn't change? Let me check my audio, guys. I apologize for that. I didn't know the audio was... Alright, how's my audio now? Because um, that's the audio we should have on at the moment. Um, so if that's the hallway stuff... Um, yeah, sorry, my lavalier wasn't on for that. Um, yes, these processes were wicked dangerous back then. Uh, they've gotten safer and... Sometimes you can make an argument for digital within that. All right, I'm going to shift uh, shift cameras now. Okay, Dis Disco Shrew says the sound is a little bit better, so we'll uh, we'll keep it uh, we'll keep it with that. Okay, we're over here. Oh no, this developer's looking looking kind of nasty, but that's okay. It's going to do its job. So I'm just going to lean my developer to one side and tip in my prints. I guess I can. Hmm. Actually, I guess I'll have two hands on one side. There we go. So, all right, next print is going in. Ready, three, two, one, tip and go. Oh yeah, there we go. There's that, there's that brown tone. This one's like a smidge dark. Looks very nice though. Those highlights are nice and delicate, though, up there. That looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, the brown is much more prominent in this one. It could have just been my coating as well. This does look pretty nice. I'm going to have to filter out some of the sediment in this or mix up some more citrate developer because this stuff is getting pretty dark. All right. Let's get back to the chat. Let's talk to some folks. How are those chats looking? Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, looking, uh, looking pretty good. Jay, that's a very good, uh, very good practice. Safety first, guys. Like. There's no print on planet Earth, there's no process on planet Earth that could possibly be worth your life. So stay safe in the dark room. Um, treat all of your chemicals with respect. If you don't know how to handle them, handle them with gloves. Put on a painter's mask or, you know, the respirator that you can get the different chemical level inserts. And N95 does nothing to darkroom chemicals. Nothing. They go right through it. So 
Um, the standard PPE doesn't cut it for uh, ventilation. You need a proper one like you would, you would buy for painting. If you're, if you're spending like 20 bucks on one, it's probably not great. Probably need to spend close to 100 for like a good, good ventilator for mixing this stuff. Um, yeah, they're, they're not great. Don't try not to breathe them in too much. I'll normally, when I use selenium in large amounts or do a lot of prints, I will turn on the fan in here. The problem with the fan is it's bad for audio. It's, it's really bad for audio. So I don't turn that on all the time, but it is, it is something that you should probably consider is having proper ventilation and a ventilator. All right. Um, the inserts I heard are good for that are the, I think it's K99, the, the ones that are super aggressive, that filter like 99% of everything. Um, if it's, yeah, you need to make sure that you don't get so much of that, um, oh, hold on, I gotta move my developer. Uh, you wanna make sure that the, the effects of that, uh, that alcohol or that ether uh, don't, don't get you over the course of printing. Sorry, I gotta nurse my developed print. You know, on second thought, we actually might be a little bit dark on this print, but that's okay. We're just having fun. We're experimenting with this kalotype process. I've actually never printed this one as kalotype. I've done platinum. Uh, what I may need to add, and this might be a good time to do it, um, there is something that we can add to our developer uh, to, there's something we can add to our developer to make things a little bit nicer for, um, not nicer, to change our contrast of the, uh, of our developer, and that is by adding another super fun chemical that I am not gonna add on camera, <laughs> uh, which is potassium dichromate. So uh, dichromates are good contrast agents when you're doing hand-coated processes, but those are other ones that accumulate in your system and cause, yeah, they're, they're cancer precursors. So you don't wanna mess with those. Max has clearly shot collodion before. You get a you get a pretty good contact high after uh, after one or two coated plates. And uh, if you just so happen to like the process, yeah, it's gonna it'll get you hooked. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's uh, let's see. I gotta I gotta move some rinsing baths here real quick. So changing down to this. I think this one, this first rinse bath is pretty good over here. I'm gonna shift, kind of see how this one has lightened. It's gotten way, way, way lighter. And I don't know if you can see, there's like a little bit of yellow that it's picking up. It's not much, it's, it's quite faint, but it does a pretty, pretty good job of rinsing out. I still, mm, nope, I'm starting to get some, some clean highlight areas. So I'm gonna put this into another water bath. I need to get some, let's see. Yeah, I need to get some water going here. Hmm, turn my faucet on. I'm probably not gonna fix these on camera because I haven't mixed any up, but that's okay. Ding, ding, ding. I gotta start using these Sony cameras more often. Man, the image looks pretty sweet from these. Okay. All right. Nice little in-between water wash. In fact, I don't even know if I have my selenium prepared. I think I, th mm, I don't think I saved my selenium from the last time I worked in this process. So I may have to I'm also gonna pull this one out. This one's seen plenty of developer time. Yeah, it's a little bit dark. This one needs some more contrast, but that's okay. All right, into the drink you go. Get that rinsing out. And let's see, we got enough for two more prints. It's 240. We'll have just enough time to see two more prints come to life changing my camera angle so I can change batteries. I gotta dry my hands off too. I don't wanna ruin these cameras. Uh, let's see, how's, uh, how's, how's chat looking? Um, hey Ian, 
Say hi to Nico back for me. <laughs> All right. Okay, you heard lore. That's that's going to be what the uh, that's going to be what we do for the giveaway. So what I can um, what I'm going to ask everybody in the chat to do right now. I have six count them six prints. I am uh, I'm giving away. Um, they're going to be random prints, but they are going to be eight by ten inch RC or inkjet prints. So not really leftovers. They're going to be good quality prints. But go ahead and enter one in the chat. And Laura is going to go ahead and get those copied down. Please be patient. Don't spam her too hard. But she's going to go ahead and copy names down. And we're going to do a uh, we're going to do a drawing for that. And that drawing is going to be at well once Lauren tells me uh, that she's gotten everybody down for that, we will um, we'll do a drawing. So hang or, hang out until we until we draw those names so we can um, we can contact you and we can get your information for uh for that print so i get that thing sent out all right they're pouring in lore i i owe you a really nice dinner and probably a dessert and a movie thank you so much <laughs> all right i'm gonna start uh cleaning up some stuff over here oh i gotta put a new battery in that camera that's right okay new battery and then it will be new print time Okay. Actually, do you guys want to see what I'm doing over here? You want to see a little bit into this craziness? What's going on? Don't worry about the, the Dutch angle on this. So I've got a tripod dangling here. It's got an HDMI. These Sony full frame cameras are awesome. So what's kind of like a, a fun juxtaposition of roles is, you know, you need I need to know this video stuff well enough to talk about this old pre-video stuff it tends to work out pretty well and uh yeah so i i like enjoy using digital technology but at the same time you're, you can only be surrounded by digital technology for so long before you have to you know start trying something different i think it's exhausting working in purely digital all the time so this, uh, this analog stuff is just a nice foil uh, to the rest of that lifestyle. Okay. Oh, hold on. I missed a super chat in here amidst the ones. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Where is it? Gaston, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Very, very good. <laughs> Lore, I apologize. It does. It looks like it looks like we have binary code in the chat right now. David, thanks so much for stopping by. Go make some pictures. That's the whole point. That's why we do this stuff. Richard, totally agree with that. It's, uh, yeah, like I think you have to strike a balance and the channel and reaching out to folks and, and you know, providing access to these processes uh, is a good way to balance that out. Melanin X Halide. Um, that is a really good suggestion. I do have an, some older LFF stuff, I think like episode five, maybe, uh, talking about tripods and heads. I don't go too deep into the price point stuff, but yeah, I could probably use a refresher on that because there are some tripods and heads I am now looking into uh, because while I love this chunky, majestic head, do you see, like, you see this thing? It's enormous. It holds like 80 pounds. This is overkill, but we need that overkill because it's hovering over chemicals. So, you know, necessary evils. All right, there we go. Now we're back. Keep my prints moving in the wash. Yeah, that second kale type, well, it looked good initially. It's too dark, we're gonna need contrast agents. All right. Okay, I'm going to let Lore 
keep copying that stuff down in the chat, and I'm going to find two more thick negatives that will print out pretty well with this kale type process with the contrast I currently have it. I was thinking I would have time to do the whole um, adding a contrast agent to the developer, but it's, yeah, it, it's going to be rough to do. By the way, if you're just stopping by, welcome to Large Format Live. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. Every Friday, I do Large Format Friday, except for today, because it's my birthday. And we're celebrating by making Kalotype prints here live. I'm also hosting a print sale. It's also why I'm giving away prints right now. People have super chatted way too much money, and the total of that money divided by 36 is how many prints we're giving away. And I'm rounding up and calling it six. So we are giving away six prints uh, on the channel right now, and that's why you see people throwing up ones in the chat, and that's so Laura can take down the information and we'll do the drawing uh, for those. Uh, you don't have your choice of what print you're gonna receive, but it's gonna be one that shows up on the website. So it's not gonna be totally like grab bag random. Uh, and who knows, maybe it'll be something even nicer than an RC print. All depends on how I feel as I'm printing this stuff. All right, so big thick negatives. What do we got, what do we got? I know I brought more negatives than this, didn't I? Didn't I? <laughs> Uh-oh. Maybe, maybe I do. All right, Lore says she has caught up. Rip indeed. <laughs> Um, let's see, where are my other negatives? You know, I, I kind of want to see how this one will print out, but it's like, it's definitely on the thinner side. Most of my negatives that I expose with my 150 super wide angle lens always end up just a smidge thinner. Um, and that's because of the vignetting of the lens, especially at the corners. Yeah. Cool. All right, Devin, thanks for bowing out of the giveaway, but also supplying three giveaway prints. We appreciate you. All right. So Lore is asking for a close to the giveaway. So we're going to uh, we're going to add 60 seconds on the clock. So for the next one minute, we got one minute. Enter one in the chat if you haven't for giveaway prints. We are giving away some prints in celebration of my birthday. I also have a birthday print sale over at mirage.com slash prints. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna try old reliable here. This was another old one from 2015, 2016. So we're gonna get that. I'm going to head out and I think my mic is still, okay. The mic should be listening to me as I go out and talk to the, uh, talk to the V printer. So I'll be back. Oh, I need a sheet of paper. Let's do. Yeah, let's do this one. Okay. All right. And now, because of this humming, you know why I wasn't doing anything outside. <laughs> it is loud and obnoxious. All right. Lining up our negative. This one should look pretty nice. One of my UV lights kind of came free from its housing. And we're gonna run this for slightly less than five minutes. We're gonna do like four. Okay, all of them are on. We're on a timer. The window has now closed for the giveaways. And let's, uh, let's take a look at chat. How's chat doing? Yes. You got it. Gaston's getting one, for sure. So, we're down to six, or sorry, we're down to five giveaway prints. But Gaston, you have gotten the first, uh, you've received the first of, uh, of several giveaways. So, uh, go ahead, uh, Laura, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure how, uh, how we're gonna get that information, but, hmm. Laura, can you think of an easy way that we can get folks information without just having people spam personal information <laughs> in, a, in a public chat? Hmm. Let's see. Um, I think I missed some questions in here. Do, 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 do. 
Maybe, maybe, where? Where is it? Hmm. Oh, my Discord. Well, not everybody has Discord, Lore. I'll tell you what. Um, they can... Um, probably the easiest way... Hmm. We'll do email. I know, it's old. But just shoot me an email. Um, yeah, so just shoot me an email. And it's the same as the LFF questions, so large format questions at gmail.com. I know who the winners are. Lore is going to write them down. So if you shoot me an email and you fake that you won, do better. I don't, I don't know. Don't lie about winning. So just uh, just shoot me an email if you are someone that has uh, that has been selected here in the chat. You know, honor system. But Laura and I will be checking the list. She's the bouncer. She's a tougher bouncer than I am. So don't lie to her. All right, uh, I got to check on some rinsing prints here. Uh, so we can we can uh, check how things are doing. All right, let's see. Renal, thank you so much for the uh, the well wishes. Appreciate it. All right. Um, I guess I have time for one question. I got sixty seconds. Okay. Uh, is the Kodak price increase across all its films or just color? It is across all of its professional films, at least at the moment. Um, so there was rumors, I don't know if it's been confirmed or not, but some of the like consumer films that aren't their professional series films have not seen as steep of an increase, but they still might see an availability dip because when people didn't see the price of those go up, they started panic buying all the consumer films. Uh, I can say as working at a retailer that has this, the prices for the pro films like Portra, T-Max, Triax, those are already up. They are already reflected. Um, so that's a great question, but it's, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that the price has increased, but it's also kind of like catching up to years of artificially low prices. Think of it like gas, except the president isn't going to complain about the price of Portra. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got 10 seconds. I got to shut off the UV unit. I'll be back. Okay, shutting that off, removing the negative sandwich. Oh, this one, this one looks pretty good. All right. There we go. That's, that's what we like to see. Nice little print. How's chat doing? Okay, so we've already we've already given away one print. We're gonna go ahead and give away two more. We'll develop this print and then we'll give away the final three prints. And then we'll wrap up the stream. So uh, actually I haven't even checked on our stats. We are still at a hundred folks. Thank you so much, everybody who's tuned into Large Format Live, and thank you for your patience hanging in there uh, for the print giveaways. I'm excited for this too, because I wanna, yeah, I wanna share this process and some actual prints that I make with it. So, uh, Laura, let's go ahead and draw two names and then we'll, uh, we'll develop this bad boy out. Again, this print is safe because I have LED lights that are RGBWW. They, they have a CRI or color rendering index that gives me uh, the right color of light without spilling any ultraviolet light that would fog this process. Yes, please. Let's go ahead and announce uh, yeah, just, uh, give, give me two names. We'll give some, uh, give some thumbs up in the chats and, uh, then we'll develop out a print. Great. <laughs> uh, Max, um, what's, what brand, um, you know, I actually like shooting with Nikon SLRs. Uh, they're still relatively inexpensive for the kind of quality camera. You're getting Nikon FM2 plus like a 24 is sweet. Uh, Lore and I personally own some Pentax K1000s, classic camera, just super, super nuts and bolts, simple. Um, and then for my, my fun camera, I have some Olympus XAs and those are just so, so much fun. Cool. 
All right, Laura, let's get those let's get those names in the chat. Who are our next two giveaway winners? All right, there we go. Congrats, T. Paul and Anthony. Thanks, uh, thanks for entering, hanging in, participating in the chat, and all that good stuff. T. Paul, it's been forever, man. Uh, I need to like, I either need to head up to Michigan or catch you the next time. I know you were, you had just made a recent trip down to the like the Hawking region, wasn't it? Anyway, but yeah, glad to see you getting a print. Okay, so let's uh, let's develop out this exposed print. Then we'll expose and develop one more and then we'll, then we'll wrap everything up. Okay, so I've got, I've got my prints. Uh, so Laura, I'm gonna develop this out and while we're waiting on this and the next print, then we'll do our next ones. Cool, all right. Let's switch our camera angle, there we go. This developer is looking pretty nasty. I guess I could like, yeah, just shimmy it around a little bit more. Oh, let me move my... Well, that, that wash is definitely picking up some of that yellow. Okay, here we go. All right, and... Oh boy, that was not the smoothest, but I can't argue with the results on the Kayla type. Yes, very, very nice and delicate. What I love about these alternative processes, uh, like the Kayla type, uh, they offer so much more uh, detail in the shadows. So like this, this particular negative only prints well in alternative processes. It is awful for regular uh, silver printing. And that's because there's just a ton of dynamic range and a very long, just a very, very long scale that's recorded onto the negative. I went a little extra hard on these brush strokes here and I am not mad at it. I could probably go for a little bit more. Yeah, I could take maybe a bit more contrast in the highlight areas here, but this looks, this looks pretty nice. Again, I'm not adding a contrast agent today because that, that requires dichromates and dichromates are bad news bears uh, without my ventilator and plenty of extra air. At very least use gloves, guys. You need to stay safe with these processes. Okay, uh, let's see, how are we doing with the chat? Do, 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 oh, of course I got my hands all nice and wet and need to dry them off again have an ample supply of paper towels when you're doing this kind of stuff. All right, how's chat looking? Da, 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 da. Cool, yeah, uh, if you don't want to shoot me an email at largeformatquestions at gmail.com, you drop your email uh, in the chat. I don't think we have many bots hanging out here and Laura will get you, get you contacted so we can get you that print. Um, it should probably go without saying, but when I have, uh, when I'm doing a print sale and the prints are ridiculously low priced, ship times are gonna be a little bit slower than normal. About seven to 10 business days is normal for an alt process print, because I have to do this whole, uh, this whole show to make them, but I'm anticipating having a few prints to fulfill. I will try to have them done by the end of January, but who knows, life happens, you know? All right. Whoa, whoa, where did the super chat come from? Whoa, what? What? What are these super chats? Oh my goodness, what am I gonna have to do? Okay, um, hmm. I am gonna have to buy Laura something nice. She got a stream deck for Christmas, that was pretty cool, but I am gonna have to buy her something nicer now too. Uh, 91 Foxtrot, thank, thank you so much, this is crazy. Um, yeah, don't, you know, you don't need to send super chats. You go buy a print. Head over to mirage.com slash prints. But that is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes, I, I, I have decreed uh, that about a print. Okay, I need to organize my prints and my thoughts here. I'm going to change camera angles. Keep this moving. Yeah, on second thought, this is a little bit dark, but that's okay. It's okay, we're having fun. We are having fun. I could actually probably pull it now because the damage 
the damage is done. Eh, I'll just give it a give it a little bit longer. Keep things moving. The worst thing you can do is let it sit there stale. Gotta keep it moving. Okay. You know, what? I'm gonna do one more print of the uh, the print I started the stream with because I think that will uh, that will look really, really, really good. Um, <laughs> Remember, you have to shoot 6x6, 6x7, 6x8, 6x9, 6x12, 6x17, 4x5, 5x7, and then you're allowed to shoot 8x10. I, I know that's a joke, but I never want to gatekeep anything film photography because it's, it's hard enough to, like, this is, you know, this actually kind of brings up why I, I really am passionate about this and why I get into this so hard, is the world of getting into film photography now is so different than it was 12 years ago that it's hard enough to obtain the things that you need, but there's also that added gateway, you know, of um, learning what you need, what order you need it, because it's all old stuff. It's not new stuff. There are people online talking about this, but there's also layers and layers, like decades of opinions on this stuff. and it's always a combination of things. So you take a little bit of inspiration from this book, you take a little bit from what you found in this video, and then you go search around and, and kind of match, you know, the style to results that you've found. And I don't want to gatekeep that stuff at all. I shoot with a big heavy 8x10 camera, but who knows? I don't know how many years my back is going to be able to handle that. If you're shooting film, you're keeping film alive, you're going to see the movies uh, that were shot and archived on film, you're doing your part to support it. And, and I appreciate that. All right. <laughs> I should buy... <laughs> Laura doesn't need any more prints. She already got the perfect print. Um, and that is an adorable little strudel cyanotype. The best one, the one that shows up in the Be Right Back video, that is hers. She owns it for life. And uh, no one will be able to get that out of her hands. All right. I know it's not much in in the currency, but it looks really, really killer on the stream. Like, yeah, I mean, this stuff could be in um, in like Pokemon dollars. I, I would be f all for it. You know, it looks looks really impressive. But I appreciate your contributions. You do not feel nobody feel the need to give more to super chats. Uh, I think we are at like a cap of giveaways that we can do, but what I might do is upgrade one of the prints at random to a Kayla type print that I made here today on the stream, just to spice things up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna get the exposure unit ready for um, one more go of that under the cave Kayla type, and then we're gonna wrap up stream because I told Laura three and it's already a little bit past three. So I'm going to take my uh, print out of the developer. Just gonna drip that down a little bit. Yeah, we're like okay, we're a little we're a little deep and dark, but that's fine. Start rinsing that a little bit, and we're going to let's see. We're gonna get ready to do our final final print. Preferably, you want to have like multiple sets of gloves. These are like really really thick gloves, the super thick nitrile so I can kind of reuse them. This paper has a bit of a kink in it. Um, kinks on watercolor paper aren't the end of the world. They can like literally iron out. You wet them and dry them, but uh, should be fine. All right, I'm gonna do our last prints of the day. Thank you everybody so much who has hung in there uh, during the madness of yet another large format live. This is some of my favorite stuff to do, uh, but there's a lot of production involved in an episode of Large Format Live. It takes a lot out of me and lore and a lot of my uh, network of photographers that support to make this kind of thing happen. Um, I also don't own a lot of the gear natively to do it, but thankfully I work at a photo store that gives me the ability uh, to do this stuff. Okay, this one I'm gonna have a little bit more than five minutes on the clock. Do about five and change, there we go. And we're going to, uh, yeah, let's do our final chats. We'll do the uh, we'll do the final giveaway and then we'll do the print reveal, wrap her up. 
Okay. Oh, cool. T. Paul. Uh, yeah, shoot me a message before you head down, for real. Uh, I'll try to make it work, because it was, uh, yeah, it's always fun to be able to, like, go out and shoot with somebody there. You know, we're n you're never, like, looking over the shoulders of another photographer, but you both just kind of, like, go out, do your own thing, uh, meet up and say, hey, what did you shoot? What did you see? So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Jonas, oh my goodness, 11 by 14. That is an awesome size format. I know Nico uh, is big on 11 by 14. Uh, it's it's a pretty neat format. Uh, Burger, that film um, is like, I've seen some pretty rough reviews about it from folks. My personal experience, I liked it. I felt like Burger was very much like HP5, but it was more for printing. So like the negatives had a contrast that was ready for printing, but didn't as look as good when I scanned them. So I think a lot of modern films are now optimized for a digitization workflow. So shooting with a camera or running through a scanner, whereas Burger I think might be a more traditional formulation. It looked great as long as you silver print it. If you scan it, it just, it was a little bit emptier, I found in the shadows when I treated it exactly like HP5. But I also didn't shoot enough to do like a full-blown test like I talk about on pre in uh, season three of LFF. So there's that too. All right, let's see, how are we doing on the chat? It's true, yeah, uh, you don't wanna, you don't want to hear my thoughts for sure like there's too many random roaming thoughts going on through uh, through this adhd head of mine but uh yeah they're always there every every little bit of commentary you hear coming out now that's like one of four pieces of random photo dialogue that are just swimming at the moment um oh thank you so much for stopping by i appreciate you hanging out and helping celebrate the birthday on sharing this print process we are st we're still at 100 folks this is crazy. We are we are definitely sustaining it. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody. Um, Lore, how are we looking on them old giveaways? Yes, it is giveaway time. Let's draw three more names. Um, I'll have to determine who ends up getting the alt process print, but uh, with that last super chat coming in at the 11th hour, uh, one of these is going to get upgraded to a calotype print. Who knows? It might even be one that you see made right here on the show today. Yeah, the contrast was, it was definitely different. Um, I kind of like the grain. Again, printing it, you don't notice it as much, but scanning it, it definitely was, yeah, like a little bit grittier in the shadows. Um, 10 out of 10 on their film boxes. Those, the, the Burger Pan Crow film boxes, I still have mine for when I travel by plane because I load all my sheets into those larger boxes. I think they can hold like 75 sheets of film. Okay. So the uh, giveaway drawing is running right now. I am also checking the clock because I have uh, a little under a minute on my last, uh, last print of the day. All right, Get those drums are rolling. So this is the kind of hype I like, I like it in the chat. It took me a while, you know, we've been streaming uh, on and off for over a year now and we're, we're slowly getting there. All right. There we go. We've got our last three winners of the giveaway. Thank you all so much for, for hanging out. And don't worry, for everybody else, there is a consolation prize. We're going to be developing out uh, that first print we did, maybe just a smidge darker uh, this time around. So hopefully that looks nicey nice uh, for everybody over on, uh, over on, or over at home. Thanks, Mom. Good seeing you. I need prices right bumpers in this this uh, this live stream. So we're, get, we're getting there. Everybody, thank you so much. Jeff, thank you so much. And uh, as a quick reminder, uh, you can head to mirage.com slash prints. All prints 
Uh, all 8x10 RC and inkjet prints are $36 today. New coupon codes necessary. Um, you can select the birthday shipping option. If you're in the continental US, it'll combine shipping. And uh, yeah, I've got to go retrieve a print. So I will be right the back. Hey, we're back. Last print of the day. Much like the first, but still looks pretty nice. We've got some of that solarization going on around the edges. We're gonna have some nice deep shadows, but we still have lots of detail in there. And that's what I love about these printout processes. All right, how's chat doing? Yes, uh, that's, uh, that's my mom. She has fostered uh, this creative energy for quite a long time. Uh, from way back when, when I would interrupt her uh, her college classes, um, I think I think I burned some army men in the kiln at Lord's College as a child. I was I was a little bit disruptive, kind of antsy, sitting in an arts class. It was also a college that had nuns, so you got to be careful. Congrats to the window, <laughs> Nicholas. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Um, All right, let's, uh, let's develop this print out and then we'll wrap up our chat. Okay. Ooh, this is, yeah, this is the last print coming out of this developer. This developer's getting nasty. Well, we still have the chops to do it, but man, it's, it's looking rough. All right, let's, no, yeah, I have to do two. That's right, I have to come at it from both ways. Ready, one and two and. Okay, that was, that could have been better. Could have been way better, but we're getting there. <laughs> But hey, at least the print looks good. Oh yeah, print is looking great there. Keep this moving around. I gotta put some time on the clock. This chat, this this live stream will probably be over before this print comes out of the developer. But it is looking mighty fine. Keep my other kalotypes rinsing next door. There's no, there's no such thing as over rinsing these prints, by the way. Um, just for a little comparative analysis, here's this one that's just been kind of chilling in a water bath for a while, looking really nice. And we're gonna get the depth, we're gonna get those dark shadows back once we tone and such, but I just don't have the time for it today. I got too many cameras to juggle, too many other little things to, uh, to handle with the, yeah, all the recording and electronics. It is, uh, it's not easy, but if it looks easy, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Ha whoa, 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 whoa. What, what just happened? Did a super, did another super chat happen? What is, what's happening? Oh my goodness. I back, I make a print for five seconds and here we go. A uh, final reminder for folks uh, with the giveaway, just make sure to uh, either drop your email in the chat or you can send me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com uh, so we can contact you. But, mom, what are you doing this for? Come on. I appreciate it. I'm going to go buy some film, half a box of film, because 8 by 10 is expensive now, but I appreciate it. 8 by 10 so... This is like the one thing that like I will always come back to with 8x10. I, I read it somewhere, either on a forum post or in a book, that 8x10 is the perfect format. It's perfect if you don't like money, but you can't argue having an, a nice in-camera negative that has the contrast dialed in. It, it makes for a very enjoyable all-analog process. Um, it's fun. Is it something I'm going to use forever? No, there's going to be a point where I just physically can't sustain doing the 8x10 stuff, but hopefully I've got a few more years on me um, with 8x10, and who knows if I keep plugging around with this uh, ultra-large format stuff or chasing even bigger cameras. Uh, it's, you know, it's like a, it's a race versus time to see. 
Big props to mom in the chat. All right. I'm going to put the last reminder up there for our giveaway prints. Uh, I'm going to change to our developer view. This is coming in nicely. I actually really like the brown tone of this one. That extra little bit of exposure is making this very, very, very nice. Uh, it won't be as dark as it looks because that developer has picked up plenty of excess sensitizer. But from what I can tell, we are going to have a very, very nice to work with final, uh, final negative. Uh, fun little fact about this negative from this particular day of shooting. Um, this was one of the few shots that I made on HP5. I had also brought with me that day some T-Max 100. I typically prefer Kodak films when possible, but they're just much more expensive. I've shot more of HP5, but I don't always get the right contrast for an alternative process print. So this looks just, just sweet. I usually expose HP5 at ISO 200, so take half of the box speed, and then I aggressively uh, overdevelop it a little bit. All right. For sure, Clyde is, Clyde is like legend status when it comes to hauling out big cameras. I mean, and I'm not, I don't even have to fend off gators. The only thing I have to fend off here is a dachshund and a greyhound. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this until I physically cannot anymore. Uh, and hopefully with the gloves and the ventilation, we have many, many more years of doing this. By the way, my inspiration for doing the birthday sale uh, for the mirage.com slash prints is not mine. It's not original. I've been following a photographer for the last decade, Ray Bidigan. He is a photographer up in the Pacific Northwest. Awesome, awesome photographer. A lot of large format, not exclusively, but a lot of great alternative photographic print processes. And every year on his birthday, he has the birthday sale where select prints are his age that year which is i just think it's the coolest way to collect somebody's work like i every year buy a ray print and it's a great way to collect stuff um i save up for it and i'm like okay what what ray print i, I make sure i get at least one a year and it's just a cool way to show a photographer that you care but also hey i'm kind of price conscious on this stuff too all right Um, let's see, how are we doing? Oh, I guess I'll do a few, uh, a few more questions. Uh, how much more expensive is 11 by 14 than eight by 10? It is more expensive than the difference in surface area, if that makes sense. So like if you multiply the surface area of eight by 10 versus 11 by 14, and then you find out the ratio of them, 11 by 14, is more expensive than the surface area equivalent plus about 10%. Yes, I actually sat down and did the math one time with the Ilford, um, the ULF or ultra large format special order. Um, it's not terribly more expensive, but they definitely make you pay for it. Like, and a lot of those are priced based off of surface area, but they also are based off of how much of the, like the master coated sheet. So when these come off the line, they have a certain amount of footage and kind of like when you're working with any other kind of bulk manufacturing, you're always gonna have some loss and it's usually like at the edges of these master cuts. So it's not exactly surface area. There, there are some considerations to the maximum width and height, but uh, 11 by 14 will cost similarly to, I think like, um, what is it? Like eight by 12 or something like that. Um, so formats that are close in square inches will have similar costs, but then 14 by 17, 16, uh, 14 by 17 and 12 by 20 are similar costs because they're similar square footage. So things like that. All right. There we go. More people to uh, encourage me to get out of Ohio. I know. Every time I leave Ohio, I'm like, why am I still in Ohio? Uh, probably one of my favorite places that I visited that has similar climate, but it's way drier, uh, was going to New Mexico when I spent some time with Alan Ross doing some black and white printing. It's amazing out there. I can definitely see why large format photographers are madly in love with the American Southwest. All right, how are we doing? Cornelius, thanks for stopping by. And in fact, this might be a good time to wrap everything up. Thank you so much, everybody who stopped by. I'm gonna take a final look at, uh, at stats and everything. We still maintained over a hundred folks. You guys are, you guys are awesome. 
thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everybody making my birthday much more exciting than the usual ignoring the fact that I'm getting older each year. I could spend some time hanging out, out in the dark room, sharing a process that I've kind of already shared a little bit before with you guys, but it's fun nonetheless. There's that final last print hanging out in the developer. It's definitely gotten a little bit more depth to those shadows since we last looked at it. Things are looking excellent. This is the final reminder. We are, uh, we're at the very, very tail end of the stream. Thank you so much for stopping by. As a quick reminder, you can head to mirage.com slash prints and all prints until midnight Eastern Standard Time tonight. All 8x10 RC and inkjet prints are only 36 bucks. Um, yes, international shipping is still kind of a bear, but at least you can start to combine shipping uh, on the big old print orders. So if you wanted to collect some work, thanks for stopping in. All right. Whoa! Thanks for joining me in Japan. That's a place I need to go to with large format. Um, Japan is actually what got me started in photography, and I can't wait for the opportunity to take an 8x10 or larger camera to Japan and experience, re-experience some of the wonder. My favorite place in the whole wide world to go to is the little island of Miyajima, which is really close to Hiroshima. Um, amazing, amazing place. I can't wait to, can't wait to see it again. All right. <laughs> Brad, thank you so much. Um, Emma, thank you so much for ordering a print. Appreciate it. Um, Hamad, I will look into that. Uh, if, if not, I might be able to ship it to ship forwarders. I have worked with uh, folks in the past that were trying to get prints. Um, I had a print order that needed to go through a forwarding service uh, through, uh, through the customer. I think I ended up sending it to somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, and then from there it was uh, it was shipped over. Um, so yeah, you can email me with details for that. Uh, I can check and see. Because um, I, I use normal uh, USPS, United States Postal Service, um, and UPS. UPS for international shipments is the worst, though. I will only use US USPS for those. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody, again, for stopping by. I'm going to uh, hang up the stream now. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everybody who's purchased prints. Uh, these super chats are insane. So uh, anybody who got a giveaway print, uh, shout out to other folks for doing those super chats that enabled those giveaway prints. I hope to be able to do organize more things like this, but they are incredibly exhausting. So I'm probably going to go to sleep for a few weeks. And uh, if you're subscribed to the channel, I'll see you next week on, uh, on more Large Format Friday.